most creators love their audience and treat them with respect. However, that's not the way to go. You need to make them fear you. At least that's what Duolingo is doing on TikTok. And it's working surprisingly well. Before I talk about this killer bird and how it can threaten you in 20 different languages, let me talk to you about brand marketing and why most of it sucks. We've all seen brands trying to force themselves into conversations they have no business being into and I frankly am sick of it. We've got Burger King sexist tweets on International Women's Day. We've got Kylie Jenner solving everyone's problems by giving them a Pepsi. And of course, who can forget Gillette telling men that we should do better while they sell their pink razors at a premium price to women. Quite ironic, really. But even if your brand marketing as a business or creator doesn't end in a disaster, most people just don't care about your propaganda because it just feels like you're trying to sell people something. I love advertising because I love lying. I'm sick and tired of being marketed to in an unthoughtful way. And most people are as well. But as creators or businesses, we need to market our brand because we need to sell our product, which is understandable. But how do you do it in a way that is enjoyable for both parties? How do you make people want to be contacted by your brand, want to watch content from your brand, and eventually become an audience for your brand? This is where Duolingo comes into play. Duolingo is a language education app with the aim to make education personalized, fun, and accessible to everyone. Like most businesses, Duolingo needs to market itself to its consumers. But unlike other businesses, Duolingo understands its audience and most importantly, understands how to cater to that audience. But for those of you that haven't seen it, let me show you exactly what Duolingo is doing, why it works, and how you can replicate it to have similar results. They mostly had generic videos trying to push their service everywhere until this video about push notifications changed everything. Since Duolingo can be used wherever you are, now Duolingo Push can remind you wherever you are. The idea was that the app would remind you every single day to do your lessons because the more you practice a language, the better you'll become. So the push notification would come and like most apps, it's a regular notification. But the way they branded it and the way they built content around it is what's special. Because in this YouTube clip, you see this harmless looking bird threatening you if you don't do your lessons. And it was a meme for a while and then it died down. Until TikTok became a thing. And some genius marker from Duolingo had an idea. Going through their content on TikTok, you can see exactly why they're different than most brands. The audience on TikTok is a much younger one and much more sensitive to advertisement. So their strategy had to cater to their audience. And here's a couple of things that they've been doing. They had Duo the mascot threaten staff. Threaten you if you don't do your lessons. And I'm sorry I left. interact with people in the comments saying they haven't been doing their lessons. In response to not getting the attention I deserve, I have decided I will cause problems on purpose. They basically played into the killer bird meme as much as they can. And they also have TikToks where they worship uh, the Duolingo bird. But by playing into the meme, not taking themselves seriously and engaging with the audience, they felt more like a creator than a business. And this is the first way Duolingo differs than most businesses because the content isn't forced, so it doesn't feel invasive. The main thing, and it's a common theme on this channel, is treat your audience as an audience and not as a consumer. Knowing your audience fears, dreams, likes and dislikes and catering to them with your content, with your messaging, with your vision is completely different than just a brand putting out content that is completely tone deaf and hoping that people are just gonna like it because it's Pepsi or it's Gillette. So here are the three reasons Duolingo doesn't feel like other brands. The first thing, it's actually memorable. Because why other brands in the same space just push a lot of research in your face and tell you why you should be doing more of your lessons. Duolingo thought, what if I had a killer bird chase you to do your lessons? Which is a fun way that has the exact same core message. Both of these strategies want you to do your lesson, one of which is just a lot more memorable than the other. The 
The second thing is they are connected to their audience. A lot of businesses or creators don't feel like they need to really know their audience before they produce a content or a product. They just create stuff and feel like they are entitled to people's attention. But Duolingo and every other successful creator knows that an audience attention is very valuable and you need to work for it. And the way you work for it is by knowing exactly what the audience wants and catering to that. You need to make the audience feel heard. They do it by replying to comments, jumping on trending sounds, playing into the memes that their audience makes about them. And that way they've created an audience with amazing engagement because their audience wants to engage with them because they feel heard. But none of that would have worked if Duolingo wasn't aware of what it can't and cannot speak about. And more importantly, what it should and shouldn't speak about. Because most brands think that their audience and people that buy their stuff want to hear their opinion on everything. Spoiler alert, we don't. Because Duolingo has a clear message, a clear audience, and sticks within that. People want to hear more from them because they're trying to solve a specific problem, learning languages, for a specific person and not trying to end world wars with fizzy drinks. You got that Pepsi? Oh and I was not threatened at all by Duolingo to make this video and these views are my own and I'm not afraid whatsoever but if you're interested in knowing why I made you watch this video towards the end then watching this video is going to give you a clear idea of how I did this. I'll see you guys in the next one.